Okay, so I wanted to start off asking about the whole development of the film and what that process was like of really getting the story together and really um, creating the script and just the process of getting the film started overall. Uh, yeah, I'll take this and then I'll, I'll, I can kick it over to Olivia too. Um, yeah, I, I wrote the film and, and uh, you know, kind of had been working as a director, directing shorts and music videos and commercials and things like that, and had acted in a few small indie features and, and uh, was kind of ready to try to make something, something bigger. Um, and uh, the idea kind of came from originally, um, I had a dream one night, kind of a nightmare that I was uh, on a baseball diamond playing baseball with all my friends. And then the dream camera kind of pulled back and uh, it was just me alone on a baseball diamond with a pitching machine pitching at me. And uh, it was very ominous and strange. And I woke up and kind of freaked out. And I thought, you know, what, what situation does that happen? You know, and that was kind of the antithesis of the very, very start of it. Um, and kind of started kicking around this idea and, and developing the world and was inspired by a lot of these kind of last person alive, you know, action blockbuster films where the last person alive can, they're an ex-marine and a biochemist and they can figure everything out and they're gonna solve the problem and whatnot. And I just thought that that wasn't totally truthful. And what was interesting was you know, what if the last person alive was just a normal kind of quiet person and, and right, they didn't person. all the answers and they weren't going to fix it? And what if they were thinking more about their, you know, a relationship that they lost or, or the life that they had before all of this? Um, and so that's where that, that angle kind of came in. Um, and then, yeah, you know, uh, having the script and trying to figure out who, who could, who could, uh, who could play K and got introduced, uh, to Olivia through, through my girlfriend, Fiona, who, who grew up with her and, and they've known each other, um, since, since they were younger and put the, put the project in front of Olivia and kind of tried to pitch her on this crazy indie project that was going to film in her hometown. And, yep. uh, and uh, yeah, we had a bunch of really good conversations about it. And I think, you know, immediately it seemed like Olivia kind of got it and un understood it. And, and, uh, and that kind of put a bunch of other things into motion. You know, once, once uh, Olivia said, I'm in, let's do it. Um, that really kind of set it off for us and allowed us to, uh, to really make it, make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, Olivia, I also wanted to ask you about signing on to star in the film as well and how you maybe got the script and what really interested you in taking part and playing Kay in the film as well. Um, well, he explained most of it. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I knew his girlfriend Fiona since I was little and they reached out to me um, about doing it and I read it and it was really nice and Honestly, it was just an opportunity to do some work with other creative, cool people and to shoot in Chatham, New York, which is where I partially grew up. So it was nice to go back home and film at home. And I think luckily we made something really great from that nightmare. We made a great thing from a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of getting to film um, in New York, I actually live in New York on Long Island. So uh, while I was watching the film, I was picking up pieces of um, being here. And I wanted to ask you both about that experience of getting to film on location and really being out um, like in the um, neighborhood and in the houses and what that experience was like for you both the really shooting on location as well. Yeah, shooting on location for me, I love it. I think it gets you a little more immersed in um, your character. It gives you a chance to like really, I don't know, to really seriously focus on the character that you're working on, you know? 
Yeah, and what was cool with our film too, and, and even again, the connection with Olivia is, you know, one of our main locations was um, this big 500 acre property um, called Scarship Farm, which is actually um, like a family property of some mutual friends of ours. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, a place that we've like hung out before because they have this 500 acres of all these houses and all the forests and and farmland and all of this sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, and also just being, you know, we shot primarily in the Hudson Valley around Chatham and Hudson, New York and Hillsdale, New York. And, and it Philmont. was a place where? Philmont. And Philmont, yeah. And, and all of those are places that, you know, we're comfortable with. And, you know, we'd show up on set and Olivia would be like, oh, I've, I've been here before, you know, like <laughs> I, I grew up here, I've been here before. So there was a level of comfort there too. Um, and also just kind of paying homage to how beautiful this landscape is, um, was kind of important and, to us. And also the beauty of, um, so Hudson Valley is, there, there is nothing like it. It's like the Tuscany of America, honestly. And it is sort of nice because I remember you and I were talking about how it's so easy to think about and get lost in the sort of isolation of upstate, even not having an apocalyptic, yeah. you know, occurrence, but like, it's just so easy to just be like, think that you're the only person for miles and miles and miles. Just, I don't know, it's a really great feeling there. Yeah, so that say. was a hundred percent. Yeah, and that was something that we, we drew on and, and was a big part of choosing the location and, and giving that feeling and that vibe. And for people who live in upstate or live in a place like that, then that, that's a pretty familiar feeling of like, yeah, I can go on a 20 minute drive and not mm -hmm. see another person, not see another house with its lights on. And you're kind of like, are there other people up here? Like, I think yeah. there are, but like, I haven't mm -hmm. seen any. And also with the being on location, like you mentioned, and being in the this isolated area, I also wanted to ask about creating the physicality, especially for you, Alex, as like your character is really walking and really going through these different locations and really creating that aspect of your characters as well. Yeah, um, yeah, there was definitely a, a decent amount of cardio um, for the film, uh, just because I, yeah, walk around a lot and and uh, yeah, I thought that was important to show. I mean, in a lot of films, you know, someone getting from point A to point B, they just kind of are there and appear there magically. It's like someone says, I have to go to the store and then they're just at the store or something. Um, and with our film, you know, we thought that because it is about this kind of last person's alive existence, that we wanted to be with them on some of those moments um, and really feel how long it might take to walk 10 miles to get somewhere to just grab one thing. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, and, and so yeah, I mean, definitely for me too, just like a physical, like I tried as best as I could to kind of, um, not just be playing myself and give give the character a certain kind of walk and a gait and a look and and a, and a feel and a little bit of a semi body transformation for me just like lost a ton of weight and started looking crazy and <laughs> grew my hair and grew my beard out so also, I wanted to ask you both about really building the relationship between your characters um, in the flashback sequences and what that experience was like of really creating their bond, especially going back to like when, they're f when they first meet it throughout their whole relationship and what that experience was like for you both as actors to create that bond between them. Really easy. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty easy. I don't really... No, I, I personally didn't really need any sort of a uh, serious preparation. Yeah, um, it I definitely felt like- It was weird acting in front of the whole town. That was probably yeah. the only strange thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was like acting in front of everyone I went to high school with and everyone I know in town because they were our extras. So that was- Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, one so of the it first... helped with the awkwardness for me about like first meeting you. It was yeah. nothing to do with you. It was everyone else actually. <laughs> yeah, we almost set it up in a very real way where that bar scene was kind of the first big thing we shot. And mm -hmm. we shot it at a local bar restaurant that Pub. of like friends of Olivia's and a lot of the extras were like, we just called out to everyone in town to, hey, come out, we need extras for the bar. And a lot, you know, we all had a ton of friends there and a ton of people there. So, in, and, you know, again, it was one of the first things that Olivia and I shot together. And so it had kind of organically that like, hey, we're kind of meeting for the first time and a bunch of Olivia's friends are here. And we're at this bar that we actually go to in real life. So in a way, mm -hmm. like creating that kind of natural organic vibe was, was kind of true and and made it kind of easy just to fall right into what we were supposed to do because it was kind of mirroring real life in a way mm -hmm. and alex i also wanted to ask about um, also directing the film and i said this was your first feature you directed and what that experience was like for you overall of starring in the film and also directing as well yeah um yeah first first directorial feature you know i directed a bunch of shorts and music videos and commercials kind of beforehand and, and all of that work was kind of leading up to trying to do a bigger thing um, trying to do a bigger project and um, as far as you know wearing kind of multiple hats the, the biggest thing was really to try to bring in as many people as I could that were also super talented um, and just surround myself with other really talented people it's like you know behind the camera it's like I, I have a really strong relationship with my DP Frankie Toriano who's a great director in his own mm -hmm. right so I knew I could kind of when I was in front of the camera I could trust what was happening behind the camera um, with him and, and my producer Max Gardner and another producer Derek Brown and then with Olivia it was like okay like I can bring in this serious legitimate professional actress and I don't have to worry about it like I am just going to bring in this person and they're just going to do a great job and I don't even have to really think about it and you know acting against someone like that is only going to make me better you know um so that was kind of the thought process also speaking about producing I also wanted to ask you both about that experience as well and really getting to produce together as well as act together and really balance the producing with your performances as well well he he works mainly um I am a producer on the film but the main producer is Alex and Max um Gardner I mean they they're the ones really steamrolling mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for us, it, spearheading, steamrolling, all, you know. Steamrolling is a bad thing, isn't we it? We do it all. We, we steamroll, too. Cool. We're um, steamrolling, we're spearheading, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, with us, you know, the, the biggest thing was, um, you know, with, with bringing Olivia on and making her a part of it was just how excited she was and, and how, and how um, you know, she is, you know, a real uh you know a real legit professional and and so she knows how to do things and it kind of in a very good way forced us to make the whole project more legitimate um you know i think you know yeah this movie could have been made with a bunch of other kind of unknown um actors and it probably would have gotten shot in a much different way that was you know probably not up to kind of a professional standard so that was something olivia really brought to the project um, was just kind of a level of, you know, a level of professionalism and kind of industry standards there. Um, and, and yeah, it was, you know, pre-production was a long time and, you know, uh, getting, getting investors and getting EPs and assembling the crew and, and figuring all of that out was, was definitely kind of a, a labor of love and, and uh, yeah, it all, it all worked out and kind of all the pieces came together and and we got very lucky. I also wanted to ask about the film's upcoming release and what that process was like also getting the digital and on-demand um, distribution as well. Yeah, um, it was interesting because uh, it kind of all fell in line with the start of the pandemic too, which, which was a little bit scary. Um, 
you know, we, we had started our uh, film festival run about this time last year, we premiered at the San Francisco Independent Film Festival, um, had our world premiere there. And we were kind of just getting started with having all these in-person festivals, um, which we were really excited about. And then March happened and everything kind of shut down. And at first we were really worried because we had about, you know, another six, seven festivals lined up and, and a few really big ones. And a lot of the festivals canceled or postponed or went virtual. Um, and there was a few months there where things just went super quiet and we were, we were, you know, a little bit, a little bit worried about the momentum we had built. Um, but, you know, kind of all we could do was work things kind of behind the scenes and on via connections and through emails and phone calls and inevitably a, uh, uh, kind of a marketing festival marketing guy that we were working with, um, Cal Greenberg from Circle Collective put the film in front of, uh, of uh, or actually connected us with Kamikaze Dogfight, uh, which is Han Soto and Andrew Van de Houten, um, their new distribution company. And they had just inked a deal with Gravitas um, to, to acquire films and, and pipeline them through Gravitas's distribution. And they watched the film and, and we started a conversation um, and they were really excited about it. And, <laughs> and and uh, offered us a deal. And um, we felt very lucky that even with kind of the way the world was changing, um, and we thought we had lost a lot of opportunity by a lot of the festivals uh, kind of canceling and postponing and, and, and changing, um, but it ended, up, it ended up working out. And also speaking of um, now with the pandemic going on and while I was watching the film um, yesterday, I felt like that's, um, that aspect of the isolation of the pandemic is really relatable to your character in particular and if, with um, the apocalypse going on in the film. And was that something that you both felt was maybe really interesting about the fact that now coming, the film coming out now with the pandemic, um, that audiences can really maybe relate to him in that aspect of really trying to relate to people and connect and just that whole overall process like of having the movie come out now um, during COVID as well. I think that it's pretty uh, like coincidental of timing and what it's like dealing with of like being alone and being isolated from others. So I'll be right back though because I have to cough. So I'm just gonna <laughs> mute you guys for a second. Um, yeah, no, it's completely coincidental. Um, but that being said, I think that there's a lot of things that are happening right now um, with kind of the pandemic and quarantine and the way people feel um, that are also things that maybe have been in the back of people's, some people's heads for a long time. I mean, I think a lot of people struggle with the feelings of kind of isolation and the meanderings of life and thinking about what could have been and, or the life that they should, should have, they don't, or, or things like that. And those were things we were trying to explore in the film. And, and then, you know, the, it just ended up kind of serendipitously happening, you know, um, and now it becomes kind of more relatable than ever um, with what we've all been going through the last nine months. Um, so in, in a weird way, I mean, it's, you know, I think we all would rather not live this way currently, but um, for our film, it just ends up kind of being a lucky random uh, kind of coincidence that makes our film a, maybe a little bit more interesting and, and relatable. Okay, I think that was mainly it, but thank you both again for taking the time out today. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you both again. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. Bye.